This is a quick demo of an NG game that has client-side prediction, lag-compensated shots, and all kinds of smoothing applied to it. Each of those topics deserves its own full tutorial um, and more, really. But I am releasing a game that shows it being done in code, and so this video is going to go with that and demonstrate um, each of the techniques briefly. If you fire up this game, it's uh, called Nenji 2D CSP, standing, CSP standing for Client Side Prediction. Uh, you'll see things that are drawn in white are predicted on the client. So in this case, this shot that's fired and my entity's movement. Now, this game's got a lot of things in it that you can kind of turn on or off to see uh, the true nature of what's happening on the server. One of the first things that I'm going to show is I'm going to um, unhide our server-side state. So now if I refresh the game, there'll be two of me, one red, one white. The red is my server-side state, and the white is my predicted state. So you can see how, even with no lag, because I'm playing this game on localhost, um, my client-side state is ahead of my server-side state. What, where does this delay come from? Well, it comes from interpolation. There's 100 milliseconds of interpolation, and this character moves pretty quick relative to its size, so it can get fully away from itself in just 100 milliseconds. If we added latency to that, say another 100, we would be you know, another length away, and if we had 300, we'd be pretty far away from ourselves. If I change the speed that the entity moves at, it currently moves at 400 pixels per second, if I change that to something slow like 100, or actually, maybe that's not slow, it's more reasonable, this is what it would look like. I do get away from myself, but I don't make it so far away that I'm not overlapping. Once again, that's at zero latency. If we had more latency, um, even at the slow movement speed, I would be getting away from my server-side state. The other thing to show is what would occur if there were to be a prediction error. Because at this moment, the obstacles, these red squares, are known to the client and they're part of its client-side collision code, which is part of its movement code. So it's predicting moving uh, into them and it gets a perfect collision with them and it can slide off of them. But if we were to have a prediction error, um, say for a genuine reason, like that we have some feature in the game, like where somebody can shoot a rocket that can push you or something that changes where you're at, um, we would end up needing to reconcile that by moving our player to the correct state. And it's something that we didn't know about. So it's an error on the client. I can simulate a prediction error on this client by removing this obstacle from the collision system on the client, but leaving it on the server. I'm going to do that just by commenting out the bit of code that um, added it to the collision system on the client as it came over the network. So now I'm playing a game where the box is not known to the client's uh, movement logic. So if I try and move, um, I get this shaky rubber bandy stuff. What that is, it's that the client thinks it can move through there. It thinks there's nothing there. And the server uh, still performs the collision, and thus there's something to reconcile because these two entities end up in two different states, not just ahead of it, each other because of time, but one's actually wrong. It might be hard to see because of all the bouncing, but if you look at this as I drag this guy around, uh, the red player actually never was incorrect. It never thought it could go through the red uh, square at all. And that is, in fact, what I am uh, reconciling the white player to, uh, the state of the server, which is the red player. The game also has um, lag compensated shots, which I can also turn on the um, visual for that. Or rather, I can turn on the visual of what, the ser what type of shot the server is doing versus what kind of shots being predicted on the client. So now if I shoot, the white line is the predicted, comes out instantaneously, and the red one is the server state, which comes out at a slight delay. It's not that big of a delay because, uh, once again, it's all being played locally on this computer, but on over an actual internet connection, it would be a little slower. The other thing that's interesting to note about it is that the red line comes from the red entity, and the white line comes from the white one. And this is the reality of how predicting shots works in pretty much any game I've ever seen. Your server state is a little bit different than your client state. So as you shoot, you do hit the same spot. These lines do converge, but they come from a slightly different position. Uh, and all games simply hide this. They don't draw the server side shot, and they don't draw 
the server side entity, you just see your own predicted entity and everything's fine. But if you were to really put it to the test, there would be certain inconsistencies, uh, especially when in first person shooters, when you're in a gunfight and there's fast movement and it occurs right next to you. There's lag compensation occurring for the collisions of those shots as well, which isn't something I can demonstrate too easily right now because I would need another player to uh, run around as I shot it. Um, I guess I could do that with some bots, but you'll just have to take my word about what's actually happening behind the scenes. So here are some bots. They're just running around in the game. And when I, sh when I take a shot at them, the game logic performs a rewind style uh, shot, which means that right when my data gets to the server about having fired, it doesn't try and see if that shot would go through anything in the current state of the server. Instead, it rewinds to what the state of the server would have been at the time that I had fired. That's the gist of um, lag compensated shots. You can see the code for it um, on the server. It's I put it in a little special area. I made a function called lag compensated shots that wraps it if you want to take a look. The last feature, here's lag compensated shots. Um, the last feature is a type of smoothing that exists to conceal any lag that a player experiences uh, while moving. Because of how this game works, our movement is very closely synced to um, where a client tries to move, su such to the point that if a player freezes, like their computer freezes or they get packet loss, um, and you're looking at them, you'll actually see them kind of stop or skip or even teleport depending how bad their connection is. Now, while all these techniques result in a game that can be played through a variety of um, different kinds of internet conditions, you still want to try and control for what happens in these worst case scenarios. What this game does for that is it um, maintains two versions of every entity on the server. That's not this white entity and the red entity, it's actually that there's two of the red entity, one of which will only be moved smoothly and one of which gets to move in a state that is closer to my raw input. Now, this is perfectly in sync, so this you only see one at red entity, but if I mess with the code that moves the smoothed version of the red entity and the version of it that tries to correspond to my movement, we can see um, the fact that there are actually two of them. And this is what would occur if I were to suffer a whole bunch of packet loss. So I'm going to slow down um, that second entity, the smoothed entity. And now we'll see that um, it can't catch up to me. In fact, the best way to see this is to see another player moving. So let me open up another window here. And now you can see two entities. What are these? Well, one's an entity whose state is very close to the predicted entity for that player, and the other one is the server side smooth state. Now, when you get lag, what would happen is the front entity would be skipping around and teleporting, and the rear one would be moving perfectly smoothly. Um, we don't show all that, you know, this is just for the sake of demonstration. What a game does in the end is it only shows the smooth one, and it only keeps the, the laggy one or, or the one whose raw state lines up with the client's movement for the sake of discerning things like how that client's going to shoot and what it's going to honor about that client. And if they ever desync too far, meaning that the player's lagging so horribly that the server version of it that moves smoothly is getting far behind, then you usually end up forcibly rewinding the client. There'll be an elaborate tutorial on each of these things uh, going forward, but I hope this plus being able to look through the code is a good starter for everyone.